Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV. So yesterday I installed the Titan fridge fans, uh, upper and lower vents. And as promised, I'm back today to install and demo their roof vent fan. So I have been using their version 2 fan for a number of years. We have it in the bedroom vent and it's handy for uh, keeping the bedroom cooler when we're boondocking. Also evacuating like our shower stall is actually right in the bedroom so getting rid of moisture after a shower it's handy for that. Um, one drawback I found with th this particular fan is it's a six speed fan and in the kind of in between speeds it would have kind of a, a strange noise to it. Um, didn't bother me that much and kind of drove Ann crazy so we couldn't really use it on, on the middle speeds. Um, I have a clip of the sound, I'll just play that for you. But you can see, I guess it's something to do with the speed control circuit. You can hear there's kind of a, it's a strange noise, kind of a whining, clicking noise when it's in a lower speed mode. And uh, that really, uh, that noise drives Ann nuts, she didn't like that. So this is the version 3, and I'm kind of intrigued by it because it actually has a few additional features to it now. It has a timer and it also has a wireless remote control. It says on the box it's good up to three meters, so that's a, you know, a little over three yards away, which would be perfect for us in the bedroom here because I'm going to install it in this roof vent here. There's our bed right there. So we could either set the timer at night or keep the remote and turn it off you know, before we go to sleep without having to get up and, and do it. <laughs> Not a biggie, but every every little convenience helps. Anyway, I'm going to do the install. Now this thing is, like I said with the other fans, are kind of designed for a European market. And the, their roof fence are a little bit different design than the North American market's roof fence. So it's all kind of made to go in there. But it comes with brackets and stuff, and I'm able to, to mount it in our... 14 by 4 the kind of standard roof vent. It also could be mounted on the side window. Um, what do we got for features here? Wireless remote, silent operation. Um, debatable about that one. We'll see. Uh, reversible airflow, timer setting, regulated airflow. So it has nine blades for silent operation. We'll see about that. See how actually silent it is. And uh, that's about it. Let's get her out of the box and uh, show you where I'm going to install it. Okay, here we go. So you get a, quite a number of brackets and mounting options. This kind of slides in like that and can adjust. And there's different hookups. Like I say, it's mostly designed for the European market. We have these kind of shrouds here, bezels. And uh, what I did before is I uh, put a little hole in each side and then mount the fan in there and put that back up in the, the hole and it worked quite well. So it needs 12 volt power, I'll give you a, quite a bit of cord there. And I just set up a test bed just to test it before I go and install it. I'll just turn it on there. That's on low. Turn it up to about four. Actually, that sounds way better than the version 2 that I had. It's not making that strange noise, which good thing there. Crank it up to max. Sounds pretty good. And we'll just check the remote, make sure it's working. It came with a battery and everything. Here we go. On max. Yep, seems to be doing the trick. Okay, let's get it mounted. I'll show you where I'm grabbing 12 volt power from in my rig. Here's the vent I'm installing it in, and not too far away we have a light fixture. So I knew there was going to be 12 volts there, and just used my multimeter to figure out which wire was which wire, and uh, just spliced into that right there and then I just had to run it a short run across and then I could plug it in where I'm going to put the the fan 
Now to be super safe, you could probably put a fuse in this line. I think the fan's max draw is 1.1 amp. You could put it, say, a two amp fuse, but I'm just counting on the, the actual main wire that's fused. That's a pretty short run of wire, so I don't think there'd be any problems, but just thought I'd mention that. There we go, red to red, black to black. And I'll just tuck them back up in the attic there. I have a whole case of them I got off Amazon a year or so ago. Kind of handy for quick projects. Well, I was able to cobble together a mount using the hardware provided and some uh, double-sided tape I had kicking around. This way I can use the thumb screws to remove the fan if I need to clean it. So we'll put it back up in the vent and attach the fan. Okay, well she's in there pretty solid. Maybe slightly crooked. <laughs> So we'll turn her on, see how she sounds. There's the on, we'll put it at 40%. So they seem to have solved that problem with the weird noise. That sounds really good. Try 60. Good. 80. Good. And we'll go max. And let's do a reverse. So it has to come to a stop and then it should reverse itself. And there we go. We're back down to 20%. Uh, let me just try, press a timer 60 minutes, see what it does with the lights there. Here we go, up in the corner, there's a timer light came on. Yeah, different amounts of LED, different timer settings. So overall it doesn't move near the air of the big fantastic fan or, or say a max air fan but for the features it's a, not a bad price it runs around a hundred dollars so you get a timer and a remote control reversible and uh, fairly quiet and the second product I have for you today and the final of the Titan products they sent me is this little fridge fan now this goes on the inside of your fridge to circulate the air inside. You know on the absorption fridges there really isn't any fan to do that so a lot of times you end up with your uh, fins in there frosting up or you you know you get uh, not as good a cooling. This will this will keep the air circulating so you get uh, more even cooling and hopefully the the you don't get a lot of frost build up on the fins. So it's quite small. It just tucks away somewhere down below. This one actually has three speeds on it and LED readouts. So there's the fast speed. Green means the batteries are good. There's, there's a couple different uh, levels of battery light. And then down here, blue is the high speed. Then green is the medium speed. And then it does have a super low speed where it turns red. So, fairly sophisticated for what these are. Although this one, because of that, it runs, I think it's around $35. So it's a little more pricey than a lot of the ones where you just stick in a, a couple of C-sized batteries or whatever. But the good thing about this one is it takes rechargeable lithium batteries. Um, on low, you can get a max 600 hours. 
but being rechargeable, the batteries can be charged, you know, 500 times, 1,000 times, so you would save money there eventually. You wouldn't have to buy any batteries for it. But that's also a big negative I found on uh, when I was looking on Amazon. A lot of people complaining because this doesn't come with batteries. And it needs to use something called 18650 lithium battery, and it needs three of them. So I guess in parts of the world, that's you can go into a corner store and get them, but around here, it's uh, still not something you can easily buy. So a lot of people will buy a little flashlight, or I think they use them in vape, vape machines too. I don't know too much about it. But anyway, I found a flashlight that came with uh, eight of them. Here's the battery there. And it even came with a little charger so I could recharge them. That's the other thing is the thing doesn't come with a recharger. Maybe though, this is sort of, they've just released this product. Maybe they're going to um, go back to the drawing board and change things. I can see why they don't really want to ship these because uh, a lot of uh, um, airliners and stuff shipping lithium is a real hassle. You have to have like dangerous goods cargo and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's the other thing is when they leave it up to you to find your batteries, it's hard to know, you know, you're buying some of these cheap flashlights and stuff. I think this one goes for about 28 bucks, which it's nice, a nice little flashlight, nice and bright and everything. Has even strobe mode and SOS mode. So it's quite a bright LED flashlight. It only takes one of those to work. But I did notice the other day I was using it and I left it on for about a half hour and the whole flashlight got really hot. So I don't know if it was the battery that got hot or just the LED was running so intense. They really pump the, the current through these things. And a lot of times that's why they have a metal case on them. I have another flashlight that's real high intensity and it gets quite hot too because of that. Anyway, they kind of leave it up to you to, to source your batteries. So that's that's kind of a, a downfall of them. So you're spending 35 for the unit, and then you might have spent another 25, 30 to get the batteries. If it lasts, that's good. If these if these have good life, you're going to save on batteries over time. But uh, we'll see. Time will tell, right? Anyway, I'm going to um, use this thing kind of hold back on my review of it until I see how this this battery situation works out and uh, and how it goes but I thought I'd just introduce it to you in the tail end of this video. Till next time, Ray from Love Your RV. Thanks for watching everyone. Cheers guys.